Truman by Jean Reddy. Truman was small, the size of a donut, a small donut, and every bit as sweet. He lived with his Sarah high above honking taxis and growling trash trucks and shrieking cars, and the number 11 bus, which traveled south. Truman never honked or growled or shrieked at anything or anybody. He was peaceful and pensive, just like his Sarah. One day, Sarah ate a big banana with her breakfast, clipped a blue bow in her hair, and buttoned up a brand new sweater. She strapped on a backpack so big, 32 small tortoises could ride along in it. But zero tortoises did. Sarah placed seven green beans in Truman's dish, two more than usual. She kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and whispered, Be brave. Then she left. Not to worry, she'd left before and she'd always returned. But this time, the backpack was particularly big and Sarah looked particularly pensive. And that banana and that bow and let's not forget about those extra green beans. That's when Truman saw something he'd never seen before. Sarah boarding the number 11 bus going south. The bus roared away. Truman waited for Sarah to return. He waited and waited. He waited a thousand hours, tortoise hours that is, until he could wait no longer. He would go after his Sarah. He would catch the number 11 south. Even amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking, even if it seemed impossible, boink. That's when he noticed the rocks, three rocks that had always been there. Ordinary rocks that now seemed <laughs> extraordinary. And the arm of the couch and the pillow propped just right and that tall, tall boot and the rug, that glorious, endless rug. Without Sarah, their home seemed vast and uncharted and unsettling. Truly unsettling. But perhaps most unsettling was that Truman could no longer see the taxis or the trash trucks or the cars or the number 11 bus. Which way was south anyway? Now the sun, sun hung low like Truman's head and heart. Just then. And then, vroom, screech, whoosh. Up floors and under doors, Truman heard it. A bus. It was time. Time to catch number 11 south amid the honking and growling and the shrieking. Yet standing there, in the ray of light, Truman felt peaceful and pensive and brave. But just as he was about to slip under the door through the opening barely the size of a small tortoise, Sarah! She spotted him shining like the sun. Truman, she cried. She scooped him up and said things like, oh my goodness, and you, and how did you ever, and amazing. Sarah kissed her finger and touched his shell and tucked him back safely in his tank, where he was peaceful and pensive and proud. And later, just before bedtime, she read him a story. Now Truman knew that one day soon he and his Sarah might travel south and see new sights and hear new sounds and think new thoughts together. <laughs>